Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and I've been carrying uh, firewood and shoveling snow for the last week because we had a big old blizzard. Uh, so I haven't got the uh, reverb things I was working on ready quite yet. That's probably going to be next week. I also haven't done any work on this sort of soothe alike except for air window sized, so it's literally doing the opposite at the same time as doing some of the soothe style things. But I've got something else. So let me show you that. This is called Dark Noise. And what does it do? Well, if we play music and turn on Dark Noise, That's what it does, yeah. This is a little utility plugin that might work for sound design type people or whatever. It's essentially an experiment because I do those sometimes. They don't always wind up being like killer mixing style plugins, but all the same, I like doing them. And in particular, this might come in handy because if anybody is doing say a game or something and they need to do a proper algorithmic noise, that can cover a, a wide range of possible sounds that could be environments. This might come in handy. We shall see. Dark noise, as you can hear, does this. And I've got a dry wet and I've got an output control. And it's based on the algorithm which covers this range. Now, what's happening here? What's happening is that we're storing a enormously wide range of possible values that we are summing, that we're adding together in order to get a noise uh, quality. And whenever we generate a random number to do the new noise, like we can zoom it up, pretty close to white noise there. But when we are keeping a really large number of possible slots to put a noise thing into, the new noise both generates a output and picks the slot to replace the previous output with. So this winds up being a very efficient... It's, it's using the same noise that I use for dithering to the floating point, so this is not a costly random operation. But the interesting thing about it is that as you start shaping it, you start getting a, uh, a texture out of it that develops a sort of mid-range equality because we're keeping this range of possible values and replacing only one of them each time, and the position of that one is the same random number that we're using. So, a relatively small number of slots gets you this sort of pink noisy kind of thing compared to your white noisy kind of thing. And you can fairly quickly get a sort of background walla sound that centers on mid-range and it rolls off lows. Or you can go to a larger sort of pile of slots to put random numbers in and get a much bassier quality that's still going to roll off at the extreme lows. Let's fool with the uh, position here so that I can look at the super lows. As you can see, the algorithm is actually refusing to 
do ultimate uh, subsonic rumble unless I change it to have a really large number of things in which case it starts pushing that so it starts pushing that more and more so we can get it where it's really accentuating the kind of subsonic spaceshipy kind of sound or start bringing the audible range up again and this seems to be about the the loudest you can get the lows out of it but we've also got this other control which is called dark and that's based on uh, the Aver matrix plugin it's uh, averaging and what this does is it gets you a whole different set of flavors because it's not set up like a perfect, accurate, correct uh, filtering thing. It's a, a sort of funny averaging thing, which will give you weird little comb filtery effects and stuff. And it sounds kind of like this. Full filtering. gets you this sort of faint ambient noise. And if you sweep frequency, it starts sounding like wind blowing at the full setting. So that's already getting kind of noisy. We're starting to get like supersonic you get into this sort of supersonic high wind zone which is completely unnatural but uh, this is not designed to just spit out any given noise profile it's designed to be fooled with it's designed to be experimented with so we have this super quiet stuff here and then more noise comes in, it starts to sound windier. Again, this could be something that you could fool around with for sound design, put it into somewhere where you need a background. I've also got the Voice of the Starship plugin, which is another form of noise, but this is a different form of noise. And you can tell that by fooling with these funny ranges where the dark control can give you these little sort of tone shaping notches in there where you can reposition them With a little less dark, you start getting just a hint of texture there, whereas full dark, it's like inside a house or something. But you can sneak in a little texture. Or indeed a lot of texture. And you can see what it's doing on a Vuxengo span there. Or use relatively little of it to just shape that uh, noise texture a bit. And it 
should be possible. I think sometimes it's nice to go into these really deep notches for some of these places because, as you can see, there's sort of two separate places where notches are balancing each other out. And both of those are positions where you can fool with the tone color that you get and it'll move around a little bit pick up here It might almost seem like uh, rain outside or something. So yeah, there you have it. I don't have my reverb stuff ready uh, this week because, yeah, multiple days shoveling snow to try to dig myself out of the blizzard that we got. Uh, welcome to Vermont, basically. But I do have something. And if you'd like to fool with another noise source, or indeed, since it is MIT licensed, all you got to do is credit me as Air Windows for the code, and you can put it in anything commercial, non commercial, open source, whatever that you like. MIT is a very permissive license. So if this algorithm, which uh, essentially all by itself is this, would make for a useful background sound for something, then yeah, rock on. Or the way that it could be shaped. Into a sort of white, pinky, dark noise kind of thing. Whatever you need, really. It's just another plugin. And uh, this is what I'm going to come up with when I've had to spend the entire week digging myself out of a blizzard is uh, something that uh, might be useful to somebody somewhere. Who knows? In any case, that... Hang on a second. That's the new plugin for this week. Maybe it's not as exciting as, you know, the most recent console or console 7 cascade so on and so forth but you know they can't all be zingers and maybe somebody out there will find this useful it is a technological experiment in coming up with a neat uh, random source and who knows whether that might be like somebody might be designing a synthesizer and need to do a random source that sounds kind of like a mid-rangey bark for a clap sound or something. Like you could gate this in an interesting way. And then you'd have a, uh, a digital synthesizer with a noise source that didn't sound like just regular noise or uh, shaped white noise because it's generated this way. And at uh, small frequencies like that, you don't actually have to use that large of a set of bins to store the random number in. But that's just maybe. Point being, this is the new plugin. Whether you like it or not, this is what it's going to be for this week. And hopefully people are still enjoying console and so on. I've been seeing a lot of noise about the... Uh, the new Apple M1 Max, Apple Silicon. All I can say is when they needed me to switch to 64-bit, I wasn't the first. I also wasn't the last. And when I did switch that over, I didn't replace my old stuff, but everything started to also come with 64-bit built right in. And that means everything. So don't expect any quick reactions out of me because I don't do things unless I can do them wholeheartedly. 
And that would mean everything in new updates, over 200 plugins, would need to be redone. And I can't do that in my normal build environment, so I'd have to come up with an entirely new way of doing things, and I have no progress report on that at this time. But just so as you know, that's how I handled stuff. So Patreon is how I'm still doing all of this. And if I'm still doing all of this at the time that, like I get one of these new Macs or something, I'm not exactly sure when that's going to happen. I should not have upgraded the one that I've got as much as I like using it now, but um, I kind of missed out there. Normal people can't just jump on the newest, greatest thing. So, you know, you got to be somewhat patient with me, but that's how I roll. So we will see. Uh, Sean from Valhalla mentioned something useful, which was that uh, he found that some of his older plugins compiled on older versions of Xcode wouldn't work on the M1, but he switched over to a newer system around, I think, 2017 or something like that. And the stuff that he compiled with that was fine. So there is a possible path forward through all of this. And we will just have to see whether I work out the way of doing that in some convenient way. And when I have time to do an entirely new set of builds to include with everything else for over 200 plugins. And when I got that rolling, I'll let you know. For the time being, I have been busy shuffling myself out of the blizzard, so I wasn't able to do anything like recompile 200 plugins for a new set of builds. I will say that the old builds are not going away, period, because I consider that very important. I do not just build for the tech industry's latest and greatest things that they're trying to sell you. I just don't do that. So, there is the prospect of new stuff being added rather than anything being taken away, because that's just not how I roll. I continue to develop on a older Mac laptop running Snow Leopard, because my stuff should run on systems like that, because people can still have systems like that, and you can make damn good music on systems like that. Anywho, it's been a long week, as you can tell. So what I will do is, I mentioned Patreon. Yeah, I mentioned Patreon. And also the YouTube thing, you know, like and subscribe and make comments, blah, 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 all of that kind of nonsense, because that's how the world works. And the world of Apple works in the sense of like revolutionizing everything and throwing away all their old stuff. I don't throw away old stuff ever, so my stuff is going to still work there, but we will see what transpires. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.